Now, a new poll conducted by the European Council of Foreign Relations think tank says that a negotiated settlement is the most likely outcome of the Russia-Ukraine war. It also says that while support for Ukraine's cause remains strong across Europe, voters think arming Ukraine is not necessarily to achieve victory, but rather to strengthen Ukraine's hand in future negotiations. Well, we're going to cross now to Kyiv, talk to our correspondent Emmanuel Shaz, who joins us from there. Emmanuel, tell us, first of all, more about this poll and how you think it might go down there. Uh, well, first off, this poll uh, shows that there's a majority of Europeans who think uh, that uh, a, a negotiated settlement of this war is the most likely uh, outcome. But it doesn't mean that uh, European partners, uh, Europeans who are asked about Ukrainian support, do not support Ukraine. Indeed, there is a majority of Europeans who uh, are still in favor of supporting uh, Ukraine. But uh, the goal, the end goal there uh, might have changed. Well, I the uh, uh, on the onset of the uh, full-scale uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia, more people uh, were uh, confident that Ukraine will, uh, would successfully manage to uh, push Russia out of Ukraine. Now, uh, European uh, Europeans being asked, and uh, uh, there's thousands of people who have been asked for this poll, are more uh, likely to believe that there would be a settlement on the actual position. They believe that this war would stop with Ukraine having to cede territory. Now, what's interesting in that poll is that Ukrainians were also asked uh, what they thought about that. And, uh, you know, we've been talking here quite often about the morale here, and it is very low because there is uh, it, there, there are uh, so few military successes on the eastern front line, uh, on the southern front line, uh, that, of course, people, uh, you know, bear the brunt. They live with electricity. Uh, 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 they, they live with power, uh, power cuts, very meager electricity supply. Uh, their uh, relatives, their beloved, uh, are fighting, and uh, some of them are not coming back. So, of course, the morale is very low. Is very low here. However, Ukrainians still believe in victory. There's uh, two thirds of Ukrainians still believing in that victory, and so far, uh, they do not want to concede territory. Meanwhile, Emmanuel, diplomacy, of course, is continuing. Viktor Orban of Hungary, who's taking over the uh, rotating presidency of the European Council, has been there in Kyiv. As negotiations, they're also carrying on in Washington as well, aren't they? Absolutely. While Viktor Orban was here to uh, basically present the Russian agenda, which was to call for a ceasefire and negotiations, which obviously uh, is not the agenda of Kiev, which uh, said time and, time and again that it was not possible to negotiate right now and that there was no ceasefire uh, in sight for the near future because that would be uh, enabling Russia to reconstitute its troops and uh, organize uh, new uh, attacks. There have been also uh, this visit, uh, the, those visits, officials, uh, Ukrainian officials went to Washington. They, uh, they've uh, talked to officials there. There is a new New aid package from the U.S. Uh, inside, perhaps, uh, said Anthony Blinken before uh, the NATO uh, summit in uh, Washington, and that would, of course, come uh, as good news for Ukrainians because they are very worried about the future of U.S. aid towards uh, Ukraine. Uh, amidst uh, all the uncertainty, of course, their uh, strongest ally has uh, been the U.S., so there's a lot of uncertainty there uh, regarding that.